Let us read from the book Isaiah the prophet and the last chapter of that book, chapter 66. Prophet Isaiah, <coughs> chapter 66 and verse 1. By the grace of our Lord. Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one I will look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, and who trembles at my word. He who kills a bull is as if he kills a man. He who sacrifices a lamb as if he breaks a dog's neck. He who offers a grain offering as if it as if he offers spine's blood, swan's blood. He who burns incense as if he blesses an idol. Just as they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations. So will I choose their delusions and bring their fears on them. Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not hear. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I did not delight. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. Your brethren who hated you, who cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified, that we may see your joy, but they shall be ashamed. The sound of noise from the city, the voice from the temple, the voice of the Lord, who fully repays his enemies. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came, she delivered a male child. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery, says the Lord? Shall I who cause delivery shut up the womb, says your God? Rejoice with Jerusalem, be glad with her, all you who love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all you who mourn for her, that you may feed and be satisfied with the consolation of her bosom, that you may drink deeply and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then you shall feed, on her, her sides shall you be carried and be dandled on her knees. As one who, whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. And you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like grass. The hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants, and his indignation to his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come with fire, and with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword the Lord will judge all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves to go to the gardens after an idol in the midst, eating swine's flesh in the abomination of the mouse, and the mouse shall be consumed together, says the Lord, for I know their works and their thoughts. It shall be that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them, and those among them who escape I will send to the nations, to Tarshish and Pol and Lud, who draw the bow to Tubal and Javan, to the coastlands afar off who have not heard my fame nor seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. Then they shall bring all your brethren from, for an offering to the Lord out of all nations, on horses and in chariots and litters, on mules and uh, camels, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering and a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. 
and I will also take some of them for priests and Levites, says the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will, will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me. For their worm does not die, and their fire is not quenched. They shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. Amen. And this is the last chapter of Isaiah the prophet, whose name means the Lord is salvation, the Lord saves. Justly, the scholars of the scriptures call him the fifth evangelist, as he is the one who almost prophesied everything concerning Jesus Christ regarding his birth from a virgin, his crucifixion, his resurrection. Almost everything regarding Jesus Christ was prophesied by Isaiah the prophet. And in the last chapter, God reveals through Isaiah the prophet what the Lord will do in the latter days, how God will do it, and what the results will be. This is a chapter that has troubled all all those people who study the scriptures. This is a chapter which is a word of God, and the word of God cannot be broken. It is a word of God that will be come to pass, and the great mystery which he reveals, that God reveals, is the distinction that God will make among men. So what will he do? with men, how will he discern them, how will he separate them, how will, what will he do, and what will the results be. And so God begins by speaking then, of course, about the people of Israel, but speaking today about the new people of Israel, the Church of God. And as we will see, my dear brothers and sisters, he is referring exclusively to the latter days the Word of God is speaking to us and to the churches that exist on earth as it is written that, that in the latter days 60 will be the queens, 80 the concubines, innumerable the young women, but one will be my dove, my blameless one, my holy one, the one that was begotten of her mother, the first apostolic church. She is like her mother. She works and acts like her mother, the first apostolic church. And the first thing that God wants from us to do. When we found grace before God. And because we found grace before God. And God regenerated us by grace. Through our simple faith. That Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. It is the, he is the Messiah. He is the one that the father sent. And as we have believed in this and called upon his name, and according to his word as well, which is written that whoever calls upon the name of Christ will be saved, the name of the Lord. Our Father saved us. Our Father regenerated us unto a living hope. He, record, he wrote down our names in the book of life. He blessed us. And he made Jesus Christ our Lord and God. He is our teacher. He is our guide. And He is our Savior. He is our God, as I said, but He is also our friend and our brother. He is the, mo the closest person that any other person on earth can have. The most friendly acquaintance that any man can have, no matter what age they are, from young children to old timers. No matter what differentiation they may have or differen differentiality they may have. Educated or less, wealthy, poor, no matter what differentiate, how different man this person may be and the life of man may be, and for any person, for any man, God has determined Jesus Christ as their best friend, whom they can find whenever they wish. They can speak to him with the confidence that Jesus Christ hears them. 
and wait to hear the voice of Christ with the confidence that Jesus Christ will speak to him. So now, God the Father refers then to the Israelis today to his church by revealing something that is well known to us now, that the heavens is my throne and the earth is my footstool. And there's a question here. Where is the house? What type of house is this that you will build for me? And where is this place? What type of place is this that you will create so I can rest? And of course, the house of God in general, we know that it is the church of the living God, the house of God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. But the house of God is also our body. As the Holy Spirit, after our regeneration, comes and dwells in us. So the main question here is, what is this thing that is built in your personal life? Because the house of God is also your, your family. Because wherever two or three are assembled, there among them is Christ. What is this house that you are building? Where is this place that you expect me, God, to rest? This is a question that is directed to every one of us individually as members, as a church, and as families. What is this thing that you are building? Because so you can build something, you will have to sacrifice something. You cannot build without sacrificing you will sacrifice your money, you will labor, you will offer up attempts, you will make sacrifices in your personal life, you'll give up other things. You won't be taken astray by the voices of men, of your fellow countrymen or your relatives. Now it is the last days that every one of us builds his house. His personal house, his body, his family, and the church that Christ has added us to. So God speaks and says, what type of house is this that you are building? And what is the place that you believe I will find rest, that my Holy Spirit will find rest? Have you not understood that all these things, all these spiritual things that are happening in your life, I do them and they are mine? No matter what you do, I'm the one doing it. And whatever you have, it's mine. So the matter is, how do you manage the things that I do and give to you in reality? And the specific question comes and says, Upon whom shall I look who builds a house and a place of rest for me? And this is the critical question. Will he look upon me with favor or not? It is the main question. Because he, God may look upon with favor upon somebody, but he may not as well, because there is no luck or chance. There are no supernatural and binatural powers or sorcery or, or craft, especially regarding the children of God. The devil has no authority over the children of God. So, what matters here is that That God, how, how will God look upon whom and in what way? Will he look upon a person with favor? And God gives the answer, the answer that only he can give, which is true. Upon whom shall I look? And he answers, the poor, that is of a, of a contrite, of a humble spirit, of a contrite spirit, as a broken hearted or the quiet man. And the main and most important characteristic is him who trembles at my word. But so that he may look with favor upon this person who trembles, not fears God. Of course he fears God. But here we're talking about trembling before his word. The word of God for him is truly the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of God is everything for him. 
So he says, I will look upon him, the person who has a humble spirit, of course. He has a broken heart. And in, reality, and in general, any born-again person that the Father has saved, in other words, because he accepted and believed in Jesus and has obtained, as a miracle by God, a changed heart, and his heart is not made of stone anymore or hard, unrepentant, that cannot repent, that cannot humble itself, but it is broken. And he has also obtained a spirit that is not arrogant, but it is meek and quiet and is able to forgive. So all the born-again churches, the born-again people, the children of God, if they continue in the presence of God, they have these three characteristics. They have a humble person, a humble spirit, and a contrite spirit, a broken heart, or a quiet spirit, meek and humble spirit, and a heart that loves God. But all the children of God do not have this special characteristic here, which is also the reason for God the Father to look upon and who in the present time does not reveal himself in the church in our life and man except in the hidden place in his closet of prayer and because of Jesus Christ. That is where he reveals himself, the Almighty God, as a Father. To whom, therefore, will he look upon with favor? The one who was born again? So he has a humble spirit, a contrite heart by grace of God, but especially upon the person who trembles before his holy word. Because what God saw among, in the people of Israel, that they wept, they chose their own ways, and not the path that God teaches to everyone, every man, and he has to walk in. Remember that the person who repents, who returns, God promises and wishes and uh, proclaims that I will give you understanding, first of all. Secondly, I will teach you the way that you must walk in. Thirdly, I will be the one who will give you advice. And fourthly, I will take care of you, I will protect you, and my eyes will be upon you. And now God comes and says, of all these people that I do these things by grace through faith because you've accepted Jesus Christ, I will look upon these people as I work in trying to make you wise and teach you and give you advice and protect you, I will look upon this person who trembles at my word. But what I repeat, God saw that people chose their own ways and their souls rejoiced in the abominations. Yet, they sacrifice a bull for God but because he spoke to them and they didn't listen to him. But because God called them and they did not respond. And they committed wickedness before God. And did what was evil before the eyes of God. And they chose that that did not delight God. They chose the things that did not please God. And how does man know what God likes? His word. And that is why, my beloved brethren, God looks upon those who tremble before His Word. Because when He calls them, because they tremble before His Word, they respond. And so, when He speaks to them, because they tremble at His Word, they answer. They listen. So, these people that he, God saw back then, they sacrificed bulls. But it says here that he who kills a bull... Since he doesn't tremble before my word, is like a man who, who slays another man. A believer who slays a man. He who sacrifices a lamb is like he breaks a dog's neck, sorry, etc. And now God, 
makes his decision. And this is very important. God makes the decision for the ones on this side and the ones on the other side. What must trouble us is how does God see me? Am I on this side or on that side? Am I of those who do the things that do not delight God and they rejoice in abominations before God? Well, these are the ones who are on this side. Regarding these people, God makes his decision and he says, I will choose that which is terrible. And I will bring upon them all those things that they fear. Because whoever fears God, and especially trembles at his word, he fears nothing else. But whoever does not fear God, and especially does not tremble at his word, fear floods his heart. And even there where there's no cause for fear. And these things are the truth, my brethren. We cannot escape these things. On the contrary, he makes a decision for the others as well. And he speaks to those who tremble at his word. He says, hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. He doesn't say, you who have a humble spirit, who are poor, contrite heart. Because this is given because... The previous ones as well, on the other side, they did have a humble spirit and a broken heart now in the New Testament, but they don't tremble at the Word of God. They are born again. Possibly they're baptized in the Holy Spirit as well. But they do not tremble at the Word of God. And so the Word of God now is directed to those, that group of the born again, of the born again churches, of all people who fear God, but do not tremble at his word. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. Your characteristics are, your brethren hate you, and they cast you out, for you live according to the word of God in all things, and they can't stand this. Because they like the things that do not like delight God. They consider you fanatic and strict. They consider you harsh. Without social status, without social behavior. And they come to the point of even hating you because they can't stand the life that you are living. The way of life and the way that you approach God and worship Him. They can't stand this. And that's why they push you away. And they hope and they pray that God will be glorified in them. And they say, let the Lord be glorified in us. But God says, This will, re- will appear as your joy and blessing, and they will be put to shame. They will be ashamed. And now he comes to the judgment. We said, God is making a decision here. The sound of noise from the city and a voice from the temple. The voice of the Lord who repays his enemies as those who do the things that are not pleasing to God, they are accounted as enemies in the eyes of God. As it is written that whoever loves the world, he does not have the love of God. And whoever approaches the world, he is made an enemy of God. Things are becoming difficult in these latter days. And the written word of God is taking up flesh and bone. A person who loves the world becomes an enemy of God. And here he testifies to this, the word of God. He repays his enemy. And the um, terrible question comes now. That I would dare say torments or maybe afflicts 
or brings into an ease, an easiness, all those who tremble before the word of God. It is written that the, how, the mountain of the house of the Lord will be risen above all hills. But the question is, in this wretched state, in our wretched state, how will this thing happen? What will happen? How will it happen? And what will the result be? What can God do? Since we see our wretchedness. We see the wretchedness of our country, but also of the whole world. All the churches have backslidden. No matter where you go, the people have, the world has come into the churches. And as the world comes into the church, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes out, the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth. And what is left? A, a human organization that is led by men. But the Church of God is not this. The Church of God is an organism. It is the body of Christ whose head is Christ and Christ is the only one leading it and ruling it. What will happen? How will it happen? What can happen? And now the answer comes from God and it is absolute. Before she was in labor, Zion, my dove, those who tremble before the word of God as individuals, families, and as a whole church, before she was in labor, she gave birth. And before her pain came, she was delivered and delivered a male child. This is how it will happen. A, in this church, in this family, in this person, the Almighty Christ will be born glorious in his life. Who has heard such a thing? And he explains it even further. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Is it possible for the earth, the whole earth, to be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once throughout the whole earth? One holy nation? A royal priesthood? A people, a chosen people that God has chosen so that he may proclaim his virtues in one moment? Humanly, this is impossible. But God answers. For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Immediately, as soon as the birth pangs came, immediately Zion gave birth to her children. And he explains and reveals here. Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery? I who bring all women to the time of delivery and they give birth, will my wife, says Christ, will I not make her give birth? What do you think? My wife, my bride, will I not cause her to deliver? I who cause delivery to all women of men will shut up the womb of my woman and she will not give birth? In one moment, how will this thing happen? Not by might, nor by strength, but by my Holy Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. How did the virgin give birth? The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, said the angel to Mary. And you will conceive in the womb without the participation of your fiancé or your husband or any other man. The Holy Spirit will bring to birth, to delivery. And as the virgin gave birth, so also will the last virgin give birth, the Church of Christ. A virgin, which the main and basic characteristic that she has is she trembles at the Word of God. She knows her weakness, her mistakes. We know them, our sins and our mistakes. We know that we all stumble in many things. We strive in our holiness. We repent. But the way that we are, we can do nothing. And God says, truly, you cannot do anything. But you have one characteristic. You are the bride of my son. You are the bride of Christ. And 
when God brings to delivery all women, will he not bring the wife of Christ to delivery? And indeed, this will happen in one moment. A nation will be born throughout the whole world because this will be from the Holy Spirit. For that reason, you who are in Jerusalem and my church and my bride rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad with her, all you who love her. Trembling at the word, first characteristic. Secondly, they love the church of Christ. Amen. What do we love, in other words? The, the walls? No, of course not. But our brothers and sisters. With the love of God that is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Fulfilling thus the commandment of God, which is that we believe in the name of Jesus Christ and obey the command of Jesus Christ, which is love one another as I have loved you. For that reason, do not look at this thing and be sad. Do not live disappointed and desperate saying, who will do all these things? Who will help me? Who will be with me? How will things change in my life? Rejoice and be glad. For you love Zion. And rejoice for joy with her, all you who mourn for her. And the truth is, my dear brethren, that sometimes we mourn for the church. Hallelujah. We say, Lord, why, how, what's going on? And we feel sadness and we grieve our children. In Christ says, wait, stop mourning. Have great joy. Because if you have great joy, you shall feed and be satisfied when the power of the Holy Spirit comes from the, the bosom of her consolation and you will grow and become strong and you will drink deeply, not in the simple milk but in the glory of god in the church hallelujah this is the future of the church with condition trembling before the word of god and loving the beloved of christ it does not matter if they speak badly against you if they say various things against you let them say whatever they want you must stand and tremble before the Word of God. Amen. Let us stand trembling before the Word of God. And God, when, when the appointed time will come, appointed day, even though we face all these difficulties as a family, as church, as uh, in business, in our work, in our difficulties, in, amongst our relationships with between husband and wife, mother and children, children and their parents, among relatives, difficulties in the church, the first enemies of ours will be the members of our household, the Word of God says. But you must rejoice and be glad. Amen. Because God will do great things. God intends to extend His peace in the church and I repeat, to the individual, to the family, to the local church, his peace like a river. And the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. And then you shall feed. On her side you shall be carried. Like the child that a mother comforts very, that loves his, her child very much. So will I comfort you. This is a beautiful future for us, my brethren. And let's make this decision today, a great decision, to tremble before the Word of God, my brother and sister. Make us so, Lord Jesus. Make it so that we all tremble at the Word of God. That we do not escape, nor to the left, nor to the right. Not a jota, nor a, not a coma. Like whatever all the holy men of God did, like David and Moses. So I don't say all the holy people of God, but especially as our brethren did in their first apostolic church, which is the mother of us all. 
the result being that the hand of the Lord will be revealed to his servants, but the wrath of the Lord upon his enemies. Now he's creating two categories of people. The enemies regarding which we spoke, who are the ones who put water in their wine, as they say, Greek saying, this doesn't matter, that doesn't matter, let us not be so strict, let us not speak so strictly, let us not be like this. He calls these people his enemies. Because while he called them, they did not respond. And while he spoke, they did not listen to him. But the others, those who tremble, he calls them men servants and maid servants. Why? Because Paul the Apostle says, being set free from sin and being enslaved to God, then our fruit will be, we will have our fruit in holiness and our end will be everlasting life. The mighty hand of the Lord, the outstretched arm of the Lord, will be revealed to his servants. And the wrath of the Lord against his enemy. For I know the works of all men and their thoughts. So here, my dear brethren, is when we tremble before the Word of God because there is nothing hidden and in secret in the Word of God. All things are open and naked before the eyes of God. I know, he says, I know their works and their thoughts. And I come here to gather all nations and tongues. This is the rapture of the church here. I will gather them from all nations, every tribe, every tongue. Who? Those who tremble before my word. And those who love the bride of Christ, who is the, the bride, the dove, the virgin of the Lord. The one who remains steadfast and immovable doesn't move left or right from the word of God. And I will set a sign among them. And those among them who escape, I will send them to the nations to testify that Jesus Christ is pleased in those who tremble before the word of God. Finishing off here so that we do not read everything. We must say, my dear brethren, that whoever has this characteristic, that he trembles before the word of God, so that according to his strength, so that he does whatever he can, but according to the word of God always, and when he does the things that he does not like, that God doesn't like, he doesn't stay in it, but he repents and returns to God, asking for help from him, then to these people God will be great. God will be glorified through these people. But whoever is not this way, To them, God will show his strictness lest they repent and return. And the strictness of God can be revealed firstly by the loneliness that man experiences. Not the loneliness of men, which is also the case, but especially the loneliness from God. You go into your place of prayer, goes into his place of prayer in his room, he shuts the door behind him. And nothing happens. He prays and God doesn't hear him. Because God speaks and he doesn't pay attention. Once and twice God speaks to men but people do not pay attention. And then he intervenes not with his gentleness but with his strictness. So today my dear brothers and sisters let us make the good decision. Let us make the decision which is unique. And say, Lord, make me, bring me, fill my heart so that I may be of those who tremble before your word and love your church. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.